And on this morning, with the words of the old crone in your head, you never really got a name, she just seemed to appear from nowhere and disappear again. She didn't even seem to be someone you recognised from the village. Okay. And what's the most mundane thing you do in the mornings? The most mundane thing? Light a fire? So you get out of bed. Light a fire. Or try and light a fire. You do have flint and steel. Oh, I do have flint and steel. You also have tinder for lighting fires. And despite not really having anything else next to the fire, or not actually, because it's so bloody scarce, it's your treasure really, mm. you have like a little stash place in the back of your cave. There's sort of a, there's sort of a pile of rocks scattered about the place and there's bits of loose rocks scattered about and behind one of the heavier rocks, you have a, you've scraped away into the sandstone, just using, um, do you have a knife or anything? No, you don't. No. What you have is a short bow, Ooh. and you don't have any metal tipped arrows, but you, you, you do have um, arrows that you've made out of bones that you've found, because Ooh. the wood's too valuable to make arrows out of. Okay. So all of your, your arrows are made out of, um, sort of goat ribs, that you've heated and straightened, or sheep, or whatever the hell it is that you've managed to catch, and they're very precious to you, and you have 15 of these. Um, short bow is 60 foot range. Uh, and it is 1d6 damage and crits on 20. Okay, and the crit would be... Times 2 damage. Times 2. Okay. And arrows... And you've used one of the bone arrows. You also, you've also um, shaped a bone knife for yourself. Or just like a, a, a small bone dagger. Which is um, well, a dagger. It's basically a sharpened bit of bone. Yeah, but in this <laughs> case, it, it, it's just D four damage instead of D six, which is normal for a dagger. Okay. Um, so it's D four damage and um, crit nineteen twenty mm -hmm. times three, as is dagger typical. Um, so you. Yeah. Times three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. standard dagger. It just cool. means if, if you know if you go up behind <clears> someone <throat> and you repeatedly stab them in the kidneys, it's very unpleasant for them. <laughs> um, and you've used you, you've used these. You basically you live off bone tools. The other thing is these bone tools, as you found out when you were digging away the sand, they're prone to breaking. It took mm -hmm. you quite a while to dig it up, but this is your your wood stash that nobody knows about, because everybody does thinks that you don't have anything and they sometimes wonder how the hell you manage to get by at all. So knowledge, bone tools? Yeah, do it. Stick it in bone tools? Yeah, so you can craft bone tools and... Um, cool. You have knowledge of working with bone. <laughs> um, nice. So you get up, you, you just sort of, you, you come to all groggy and Snuggle up to Simon, give him a bit of a nuzzle, and he's like, <laughs> like opens an eye and looks at you, and you open an eye, look at him, and he closes his eye and sort of nuzzles into you as if he's trying to go back to sleep. Okay. And you sort of heft him away from you, and be like, "Come on, Simon, we've got to, we've got to get there." And you start making a fire. Mm -hmm. You have some food in the place, enough food for. Two days. You need more food at some point. Dried cuisine. meat and cactus. Two days. Okay. So we light the fire. Yeah. Um, and uh, I get some of the dried meat. Mm -hmm. A piece of the dried meat, and I break it in half. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I give one half to Simon. 
and I have the other half. Okay. And you've sat there eating. Uh, where are you sat in the cave? Um, I've climbed back into bed with with. With, with so you're, it's your and fur on the floor, so you're sat on the fur, and are you uh, near the cave mouth or are you towards the back of the cave? Um, let's say that the fur is sort of quite close to the fire, obviously. And yeah, but is that is the fire, where's the fire? The fire's central. So it's in the middle in the of the cave? Middle of the cave, yeah. Okay. Let's say that the bed is between the fire and the back of the cave to try and maximise the heat, so we sort of get away from the entrance as far as much as possible. So we have the entrance, fire in the middle, back of the cave, and we sort of have the furnace there next to the fire. And just sat nibbling with Simon, who's licking and then chewing, and then almost swallowing, and then bringing it back out, and licking it, and chewing, <laughs> and almost swallowing, because there's, there's not a lot to go around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he sort of seems to really be dragging out his eating. How do you eat? Um, exactly like Simon. Exactly like Simon. <laughs> so, like, yeah. so you're like licking it and just really savouring like really, every, really every flavour, every morsel, yeah. really appreciating and getting as much out of this, this meal. Sucking it. Yeah, and you really slowly... Uh, how long does it take you to eat? It's such a small piece and... Well, let's say we took a while, let's say ten minutes. Ten minutes. As you're eating this, you hear some kind of ruckus hanging out his leg. On the outside, and it's like cries, witch, witch, or reach, reach your ears. What are you gonna mm. do? Uh, can I listen? Yep. To see if Make I can get a check. better. Better hold of Oh, what's that? There's something going on. Mm. Oh fuck! <laughs> Plus zero. Nine. Uh, you just hear a cacophony of voices there, and there just so there's quite a few. People. There's quite a few people. There's lots of shouts going up, and you know what this village is like. They're very narrow-minded, as far as you're concerned. They're all just trying to do the daily things that they do, and very much just not really interested in anything outside of that. Um, d does it sound like their um, shoutings uh, of which are directed at me, or is, is it? It's outside. It, it's it outside seems to be sort of maybe somewhere further down the cliff face. Okay, but they're not like right outside my cave, but mm -hmm. they're, they're down the cliff face. Okay. Um, I look at Simon, and, go, <laughs> and uh, I, I climb out of bed, and I uh, I creep to the entrance of the cave, and try and. Poke my head out, but without trying, but without being seen, I'm very conscious. I don't want to be seen. So outside and try the and look down and see. Outside the cave, there's a very narrow path, to sort of maybe a couple of feet wide, that mm -hmm. traverse up and down the whole cliff face. It's okay. like a pretty dangerous place for There are bits of rocky outcrop, and you you sort of scoop out on on all fours, mm -hmm. keeping very low, and just sort of peer out over the edge of the path. And beneath you, maybe a hundred feet down quite a big drop. Mm. You can see the people gathering and you can sort of hear these cries going up a bit closer, some closer, some further away and you can see somebody running and you can see a group of villagers chasing them trying to sort of hit them with um, lots of bone basically. Nobody really has any high tech tools. You know, they don't even have metal tools really here. Make a, a spot check. Can't see the thing properly. Uh, that one with the easiest to see. This. Okay. No wisdom again. So. You think that it's a woman being chased, and they don't exactly look like they're going very quickly, and people start catching up to them, and it looks like whoever it is is getting surrounded by people now, and you can sort of see arms flailing a bit. What you gonna do? Mm. Do I recognise this woman? Does she yeah. look familiar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot? Yeah, make a spot check for Simon. Okay. And make an intelligence check for both of you. Six so, for Simon. Yeah. And an intelligence check for both of us. Okay. So me first, that'd be five. Five. 
And then Simon. Wow, you are just the most amazing dice roller ever. It's play. all consistent. <laughs> it's it's, it's all really consistent. <laughs> if only you needed to score low. Um, uh, you're looking, you can see him, you, uh, you're not really sure what's going on. You saw Simon's out. And he sort of starts bouncing around a bit, looking at you like pointing at it and like looking at you and pointing at it and looking at you. You can easily make your way down the cliff face because there are paths that zigzag their way down and it's about a hundred feet drop. Okay. I ask Simon if he thinks that we should go down closer and have a better look. What do you think, boy? He's like, oh, oh. Let's do it then. Okay, so he starts bounding down ahead of you. Um, and as you approach closer, make a spot check again. As you approach again, all you can really see is people that you generally find quite obnoxious just seem to be surrounding and you you hear somebody saying, She's a witch! She's a witch! We must kill the witch! Mmm. Do I recognise these as being people from the village? Yeah, these are all, the village. yeah, these are all villagers. Okay. I mean, there are more villagers. As you are making your way down the cliff, you start to notice that there are villagers sort of standing just at the doorways to their caves. Uh, there isn't a wind today. It's a, it's a calm morning, but as the sun is rising, you can sort of start to really feel the heat. And in the distance, a bit of a shimmer starts to appear on the, over the desert. Um, the sands are starting to warm. And the people below seem to have surrounded someone and they don't seem like they're being very threatening but they're not actually attacking mm. whoever is but they're like they're almost they're looming up over mm. whoever it is and they're like ah, and you can't hear what they're saying. They're too far away still. So. I'm gonna just wait and watch. Okay. So as you wait and watch, the people seem to get more agitated at first. And then a cry, a cry goes out, it's like, We must finish this! And um, somebody shoves somebody else forward, and everybody else is like, Woo! And comes back, and as the person comes forward, they all stand and watch, and he's like, He's not, there, there's no leaders in this village as such, it's sort of everybody's really equal, but it's a bit like, Oh, we'll force you to do it for us, and we don't have to. Mm. And the person is there and you see them and they raise up a bone club over their head and you can sort of see their arms shaking and they're like, YOU MUST DIE! Uh, make a spot check. You're only about 50 feet away now. Ooh, 16! And you realise that it's the old woman, the crone, who came and That's told you That's what I was waiting for. for. Right. <laughs> Thank you! 16! <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, he's literally, his arm is wavering in the air and he's looking down there, pointing, he's like, You must die, you are a witch! How far away am I? About 30 feet now. Oh, and I'm... Um, and above. How high? 30 about, feet up. 30 well, feet up. about 20 feet up and 10 feet 10 away. 10 feet away. So, beneath you, there are rocks, it's sandstone, it's very smooth, it's very easy to move along, you're not risking getting caught up or stabbed by anything. You are a very, you are a competent, very competent climber. Mm -hmm. So, in climbing, you have five points, five skill points. All right. So in ranks. Yeah, yeah. So five. Um. So plus your strength, so you're six on climbing. No, no, no. Plus your strength modifier, so it's six for the total for the skill mod. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, so one. Because your ability, your um. Yeah, so the skill mod is plus one. No, 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 the skill mod in total is plus six. It's plus six. Because your ability modifier. Ability, there we go. Alright. Play D&D before you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so six. Alright. Uh, also, you have advantage in this situation because nobody can see you. They're all focused only <laughs> on her. What you gonna do? I don't like to be seen or known, uh, and I'm too close to my kids. She's the only she's person that's she's ever the only one for that's ever. ever. And, she's not, and as far as you know, she's the only person that's ever been nice to you and treated you like a person. Even before my hallucination. No, before then you did, but since then. Since then, okay. Oh God. And although she was a bit strange and weird. 
I am going to run mm -hmm. right up to them mm -hmm. with Simon and we are going to go crazy. Like literally okay, okay, screaming, okay. biting ourselves, rolling on the floor, just running up to them going Aah! like really mad, like okay. as if we're insane. The dog is rolling on the floor, barking, um, just going crazy. Okay. I'm trying to scare them off <laughs> by being really weird. Okay. <laughs> Um, make charisma check with advantage because nobody sees you coming in. Alright. Just a straight charisma check? With advantage, so. <laughs> 4 and 11. Okay. No pluses. So 11 is my best. Okay. So, you run down and you start going, oh! And then Simon sort of starts going like, ah, 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 and snapping at people's ankles. And the first sort of few people you come to are completely taken aback. So four or five people just look around and they're like, Whoop, ah, and start turning around and sort of running, running into the people, other people who just sort of turn around and start shoving them back and being like, Bloody Red, what are you doing? This is a witch, she has to die. Um, and a guy who has got who's was sort of havering about killing and sort of turns to you. Um, why is she a witch? What has she done? She cast a spell on me. What spell? She made me do things against my will. I'll make you do things against your will if you touch her. He's a witch. And then I literally stop me. I start rolling on the floor even more, going mental. Like like me and Simon are both just going drooling and everything, and like phone is just like like really trying to make him out. Ten. Okay. Um, most of the people at this point completely freak out and just start backing away and sort of in amongst you freaking out you sort of take the odd glance around you can just see people are just completely aghast and agog. All attention is now on you. It's almost like they've completely forgotten the witch that they, they the old woman. And um, now they're sort of, they're, and a small group of them are now pointing at you being like, witch, witch, witch. Um. If you don't all back away now, I will cast a spell of death on you! I, I'm lying, obviously. I, I don't know. But <laughs> Make a check. Um, it, would this be a bluff? Yep. Is, is a bluff more hand-to-hand? -hand? No, no, no. A bluff, uh, it can be used in hand-to-hand -hand as bluffing. It applies to any form of bluffing. Cool. So if you were going to bluff in a game of cards, it would also apply. Well, that doesn't plus anything anyway. Might do a few. <laughs> okay. Two. So uh, just the group of people in front of you start advancing on you. Now yeah, listen, witch, you have to die. Um, make a perception check. For you and Simon. 18 oh. for me. You notice that the old crone has done a runner and is now starting to run towards a narrow cliff pass that leads up towards the, the actual sandy pass up into the mountain. Okay. Um, These guys are advancing on you, sort of threateningly, holding at weapons and looking at you with venomous eyes and contempt. Okay. Reginald, you shouldn't even be in this village. We turned our backs on you. In the meantime, most of the people now are just, they've, they've, they've backed right off and they're still like a bit like, bleh, bleh not sure about this one like and whenever you're like booga booga or anything like that they're like Ooh! but there's just this three four no there's four men advancing on you one of them is called bertram one of them's called fingers one of them's called mirror and you know these three are like they're really kind of the you think of them as the village bullies but they're the people that really kind of bind this village together and hold it together and keep everybody in line 
very much in their so own they're favor, they're, of course. They're the, the authority, basically. They're the authority. Okay. But they're, they're, it's, this is just a group of people that happen to right. live in the same place, really. It's not like an organized thing. There's no real hierarchy. It's more a case of, if you're bigger than everybody else, then everybody else will do what you they're say. They're the big dudes, okay. Um, um, I, could, I, I'd sign they're walking them. towards you. Uh, obviously, through protection, the first thing that Simon does is put himself between... Put okay, so Simon me. gets between you. He just sort of hackles, uh, hackles up and yeah. growling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's an instinct, yeah. yeah. I'm being threatened, so... Uh, so Simon just leaps in front of you, his hackles are up, and he just starts uh, growling at them. for that? Enough for a minute. Okay. He's, He's doing that. Alright. What are you doing? Oh! <laughs> Come on, Reginald. Um, I'm slowly backing away. But it, it, like that, literally, like just slowly backing away. But at the same time, with the odd, you know, crazy twitch, I'm just backing away. But <laughs> like just, just keep them off the guard, you know, and just yeah. throw them a little bit, yeah. Just spit, okay. and then backing away. The thing that's freaking them out, that I'm trying to freak them out, is by being really normal, and then suddenly just going. Normal against them. Every time you go, <laughs> they just sort of freeze. Like, <laughs> they're like, he's a witch, he's a witch, he's casting a spell. They start muttering amongst themselves as they go, ah, is, is, is it? And they sort of, one of them starts, suddenly lunges forward, and you go, and he's like, Wah! and he sort of backs off back into the group, and then another one lunges forward, you go, and he sort of backs off again. Like, they really want to do something, but they're not quite they brave think enough to cast, actually cast a spell attack. on them. Okay. Uh, which direction is the waif or the the hag? Right. The hag. Uh, she's she's gone. She's got going up towards the mountain pass. Towards the mountain the pass. The sandy pass that the, the village is named for. Mm, I'm gonna run. Okay. I'm just gonna turn and peg it. Literally run as fast as I can. You gonna do anything else? Simon still got his hackles up and growling at them, and you just turn and start to run. Yeah. But Simon's still there growling at them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you leg it, where are you going? Uh, towards the wave, the, the, the hag. The people are in between you and her. Shit, okay. Um... <clears throat> you know that you could easily loop up around paths around the cave, around the... Um, the cliff front and around the cave. You know these areas well, you have stolen from many people. <laughs> only a little bit, only just to I keep yourself it. going, only when you need it. Only but you've stolen it. from most people in this village at some time or another. Okay. So you really know the sort of your ways around the paths here. Um, hmm. Okay, I start running, but then I think, what the hell am I doing? Because I've just left Simon there. He could get attacked.